Hey y'all, Chuck here again, here with a half acre home instead. We're out here in the rabbit tree, and I think the last time that we brought you guys out to the rabbit tree, we were talking about the drop down nest boxes and how good they were. I still believe that, I just want you guys to know that. However, there was something that I hadn't thought of. Um, a couple of days ago, my wife came out to feed the rabbits about nine o'clock in the morning and well what she encountered was just strictly I mean it was dreadful you'll remember we told you that Nala was having a problem with her babies and she had lost three of her eight babies and she had five left well Jessie had six she took on Mary's baby that gave her seven we gave her Nala's babies okay that made her 12. Jessie, God bless her, she raised every single one of them. They were, they were getting their eyes open. Some of them had their eyes open. And my wife came out a couple of days ago and a raccoon had invaded the rabbit tree. And what she found, we'll just say it's a ghastly sight. Uh, all of mama's, all of the mama's and daddy are just fine. But the 12 week old baby rabbits, week, week old plus baby rabbits that Jesse had, some of them were hers, some of them not. Every single one of them were lost. And I told you about the drop down nest boxes. As you can see, poor Jesse, her nest box is empty now. She was raising, she was raising and making them flourish 12 baby bunnies and now they're all gone what happened was you'll see this is half inch half inch wide by one inch long squares on this what happened was the raccoon invaded the rabbitry it could not get into the cage okay it could not get into the nest box but unfortunately what it could do was reach through the holes of the nest box where the babies were laying and literally pull them through the hole uh, my wife came out here and basically what she found were bits and pieces of that litter of 12 uh, You know, it's sure we were raising these rabbits to eat, but I don't know if I've told you before. I was just discussing this with, with my wife inside earlier today. These guys, they're making food for us, okay? And we love and we care for these animals, all right? Now, someday, Velveteen here, her useful purpose is going to be up, and she is either going to have to go to somebody that wants to keep her for a pet for the rest of her natural life or she will have to become food herself. Now that's hard to take for some people but the way the way that we make it work for ourselves is we live in the satisfaction of knowing that while Velvia is alive and while she's producing babies and making food for us, we're going to make sure that she is as comfortable and as stress-free as we can possibly make her. You wonder why we put this hay up here, just not to get off the subject here. This hay they raise up there gives them a little exercise. It's kind of like a toy. They get up there and they'll grab a piece of straw and they'll pull it through the top. Okay? We put straw, we put their hay in there. This is alfalfa hay. We put it in the cage and they eat it, you know. But we put we put a little bit up here and, you know, it keeps them from being bored. Actually, Velveteen is coming up to the cage here and going nuts because she's, she, just like some of the others, look at Jesse here, I got them spoiled. We, we buy day-old and stale bread stuff from a, from a local bakery at a very good price and we bring it home for the chickens and the bird, you know, the other birds. The, 
and uh, we supplement their commercial feed with that. Well, <laughs> these guys are kind of spoiled. They love it better than the hay even. You know, alfalfa hay is a main staple uh, that their commercial rabbit feed's made out of. So we prefer just to buy the alfalfa hay. It's, it's, I think it's better for them because it hasn't been commercially processed or anything. And we give that to them. Uh, of course, we supplement their, like I said, we supplement that diet with other things. The stale bread and what have you, which it spoils them. So they get to where every time we come out here, they'll act like they haven't eaten in a month because, and it's not because they haven't eaten, it's because they think we're bringing them treats. And they are excited. That's what that is. These, I, I assure you, none of these rabbits are underfed by any way, shape, form, or stretch of the imagination. But we put that up there. Number one, it, it doesn't make as big a mess. Some of them, sometimes they won't eat the thick stems. And what have you, you'll see that's what we end up with a lot of on the ground. But when they don't eat the thick stems, if you put, it, if you put a bunch of it inside there, they'll eat down the leaves and what have you, what they want. They leave those thick stems. Then you've got the job, you've got to clean that out. Well, if we put it up here, they're not going to pull it through here, down to there, unless they want to eat it. So it'll stay up here instead of in there. If you put it in there and it piles up, makes a mess, guess what? Next thing you know, rabbit makes a bathroom out of it, and it's going to make a big mess, and they're not going to clean that up. Guess who has to clean that up? No, we're going to, we're going to put it up here. That's why we do that. Now, the raccoon, back to the raccoon. Well, you know, everything has a right to live until it infringes on the rights of my animals to live. That raccoon came back a, a day later and, you know, I was always told that raccoons are smart. Well, we found a stupid one. Thank, thank, thank goodness because it's gone now. But on the outside of this building, on the other side of this wall, there's another cage this long, six, six holes, fastened to the wall down low. But that raccoon got caught in one of those cages. It didn't have anything in it. The pigeons that were in it, when the raccoon attacked here the day before, Dana and Becca, mm -mm. They, took those, they took those rabbits there was, a, there was a, a young buck rabbit out there and there was a pair of fantail pigeons out there. They took those and they put those elsewhere where they would be more safe. Good thing they did because, like I said, yesterday... Last Monday. That's when it came oh, back. Oh, this is Wednesday. Okay, yes it was. It was Monday evening. Sorry about that. Monday evening, that raccoon came back and it got caught in that cage. When Dana took the fantail pigeons out, she left the door open to the cage. The raccoon, the only thing I can figure why the raccoon went into that cage section, being as there was no animals in there, is there must have been some of that stale bread left in there. Or there must have been some of the pigeon's feed still in the, in the feed container in that cage section. Or the cage, being as it was out in the open, we had the old uh, plasticized, I call it plasticized, but it's like a, it's like a flexible plastic uh, that uh, dog food bag, it was a dog food bag. And we had it laying down on top of the cage section that they were in to keep the rain off. The rain, you know, the rain wouldn't go through it. It wouldn't make it rot because it was plasticized and we had that weighted down with bricks to keep the pigeons when it rained, they didn't get wet. Okay, well, maybe, maybe the raccoon smelled the inside of that dog food bag or something and thought that was food. Either way, I don't know. But we were going to a ball game with 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 my son Austin. I think you've met him in a couple of in a B video or two. Uh, he was playing he was playing baseball, and uh, Becca Becca was here by herself, and she went out and that raccoon just a cage section just like this, only it was on the end, and it's right down there, just outside this building. There was a raccoon in there, and uh, she texted her mama. Mm -hmm. She's she called. Out. Oh, she called. And she was cr she was upset. She was she crying. Was, she was upset. She thought she didn't know that Dana had removed the pigeons from that section. She thought that raccoon had got the, gotten those two fantail pigeons, and she was tore up. Okay, 
it's probably too late for this, but long story short, Becca found found a high powered air rifle. She pumped it up and she took care of Mr. Raccoon. Now, while I love all of God's creatures and what have you, uh, I don't want to live with them. The ones that we live with, we have pens and we have cages and we take care of them and feed them. The others, well, they need to go somewhere else. And unfortunately, it was just a bad situation all around. Uh, you know, I, we don't like to kill anything if it's not necessary. In this time, it was necessary, and we're probably going to get some bad comments. And I'm sorry, you know, that's just the way it is. If it was you in the same situation, I can't believe you would have done things any different. But on the other hand, I'm not making this video to defend myself either. What's done is done, and she did the right thing. She dispatched. It was a threat. It was a threat to our little homestead and the critters that we keep here for our personal use and consumption and enjoyment. Okay. Um, on the other hand, that could be looked at no different than if, what if somebody, what if somebody was trying to break in your front door of your house? They're going to come in and they're going to rape and or kill your kids. Now, a lot of you are going to sit there and you're going to say, you know, well, they still don't have to die. I'm sorry. Have you ever seen a mama bear when somebody messes with her cubs? I'm just saying. If you wouldn't, be, if you wouldn't be the same way defending your kids, there's something wrong. You know, seriously. I'm sorry. Uh, I've never taken a human life. I hope I never do. Somebody comes in my door, threatening my kids. It's me or them. One of us is, is not going to make it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. And the raccoon, that's the same way. That was that that affected our livelihood. Okay, it affected it. It affects my my kids' livelihood. Therefore, it is the same as an attack on my kids. And I'm just rambling. I've got something on a happier note that I want to share with you. We're going to get off this bad situation. And uh, I got something I, want, I do want to share with you this morning. In between the hours of about 10.30, 10 or 10, well, 10, about 10 o'clock this morning, and we'll say about 11.30 or noon, Miss Eve, Miss Eve here became a baby, or, okay. no, she became a mama, she's got babies. <laughs> uh, she became a mama for the very first time. And so, with, with good situations, you know, you can't let the good situations you can't mess up the good situations by fretting about the bad ones. I think that's a line I read. From, I, I remember hearing from Old Yeller. If you've never watched Old Yeller, you got to watch it. And if you didn't cry, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> but we're going. I'm going to try. I know I'm going to get in your way, but we haven't looked in here. We're going to check and see that these guys are okay. We're going to see how many she has. And Eve, being she's never been a mama before, I don't know exactly how she's going to react. So. I think she'll be okay, but sometimes first-time mamas can be really defensive because they're just not sure what's going on, and they're just not sure if I'm a threat to their babies or not, even though they see me every day. Hi there. Hi, Eve. Hi, Eve. What did you do? Huh? What did you do? Did you have babies? Huh? You big mama? You big mama? Let's see. Can I see your babies? Huh? You gonna let me see? This is a, this is a tough angle. Probably should have put the nest. Okay, where is it? Uh, I feel a nest. Okay, I'm gonna do this very quickly because they're just they're newborn. It is warm enough out here, but I'm still gonna do this as quick as I can. Uh, if you can get right up behind me, I'm gonna hand these guys to you. Save the hair. Here, guys. Here's one. Here's one. That one's gonna probably look like Daddy. I've showed you, we've showed you Daddy before, I think. Big Red. Oh, Red. Big Red. There's baby number two. One sign, folks, if, if you don't know, if you've never been, if, you, if you're new with rabbits, one sign of a good mama, especially if it's their first litter, look at all this hair. 
She pulls this out of her own body. Yes, it hurts. But you know what? She does it for her babies. What won't a mama do for her babies? Well, a good mama will do just about anything. And my goodness, um, I think, I think we might just have a pile. Uh -huh. This one, this one's going to be white. From the looks oh. of it, it's probably going to have dark points like a Californian breed, if you're familiar with those. <laughs> There's another little pink one. These are going to be, the most generally, those are going to be white when you see the ones with pink skin when they're born. But we learned the other day that the lighter, the lighter reddish gold looking colored baby that Velvy had, she was born. She was, she was born pink. So it could be that color as well. So, okay, how many you got? Uh, I think four. <laughs> I think we got that many more. Oh my goodness. I don't know which end I've got. Here, there's the front end of that one. You got four, five. Pull your shirt up. Pull the bottom of your shirt up. There you go. I don't lay right in there. How many was that? Five. Six. See, the one with just very little hair. Their skin is usually the color of what their fur is going, the color of their fur. Except for what I mentioned. Is this seven? Yeah. Okay. Don't let me lose count because I'm talking. How's she doing? She's okay. Okay, that's what we got. Eight. Seven. Seven, Seven live. Get them back. I'm gonna put the hair, try to put the hair back with them. Hey babies. <laughs> Come here guys. Come here guys. You hear them squeaking? Sound like mice. Rabbits are related to mice. Did you know that? Mm -mm. They're rodents. Cool. They're cute rodents. You know how you can tell? One 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 thing that rabbits' teeth never stop growing. From the time they're born, their teeth never stop growing. That's why. I guess somebody's comfortable. That right there, that, that is the comfort. That's what comes from. She's enjoying her time without having babies. She's enjoying her time without babies, waiting for the next babies to be born. Here. Doesn't she look comfortable? Is that the last one? That's the last one. Okay. You gonna keep that hair? No. Okay. If you do take a look at your baby bunny like that, be be brief. What we do at first, we just count them, and then we'll give them a few days. They get their eyes open anywhere from seven to I'm gonna say about ten days of age. Um, sometimes it's closer to two weeks old, um, just depending, you know, it seems like, just like with animals and people, you know, no two litters are the same. Um, I'm going to spare you, I'll spare you the, uh, the bad part, but like I said, we can't, we can't spend time fretting about the bad stuff. It takes the enjoyment away from the good. The thing is, Eve and our homestead have been blessed with seven beautiful little baby bunnies here on April the 29th. And just, I will let you know, Eve, she had eight. We just removed number eight. It didn't make it. Um, that does sometimes happen, but... I will say none of these other bunnies had, they had their babies, they didn't lose a one at birth, okay? That doesn't mean Eve is a bad mama, okay? But when they're first time mama, 
we are a lot more lenient with certain things than we would be if, say, she was, you know, a couple of years old and she'd had, you know, ten, eight or ten litters already. Uh, Velvie only had five, but she raised every single one of them. Eve had eight, and hopefully she's going to raise seven. Jessica only had six. Now, she's an older rabbit, but we're going to consider this as her first time because she hadn't had babies since last summer. Sometimes when they when they have a, a long hiatus like that, sometimes it takes them a little while for their female motherly parts to start working, you know, correctly again. And, you know, six rabbits is not that bad, you know, but I've seen them have 10, 12, you know, they can have more. Um, we're happy with everything we get, you know, it's not that, it's just that the more babies we get out of each birth, well, that's more food, more potential, you know, income, more poten or more potential breeding stock, uh, what have you. Uh, I've got this, hair, this rabbit fur out of that <laughs> nest, and I just touched my nose, and now my nose is going to itch, so forgive me, you're going to see me try to scratch and pull rabbit hair out of my nose. But, uh, so... Sad day. We had a sad day on the homestead. Turns into a happy day on the homestead. So you have to take the good with the, you know you have to take the bad with the good. You know uh, I can guarantee you everything is not going to always be the way you want it to happen. But press press onward. Don't give up. I was ready to give up on these rabbits. We have been trying to breed them since last fall and hadn't had one single successful litter. In fact, through the winter, most of the time these does, they, they would breed, but they wouldn't, what I call, take. In other words, they didn't become pregnant. Um, I was just about, I sold off, we had almost 30 does out here. I sold off all but what you see here in this building. Uh, I was about to give up on them. I really was, because it was just money down the drain. What were their feed and, and what have you? It was just money down the drain. And luckily, still had these rabbits left. As soon as spring hit, and and the days started getting long again, and it started to warm up. Well, bam! You know now they haven't been successful except for Velveteen. But well, we won't count Eve yet. Hopefully, she's going to be successful. But you know, this wasn't because of the rabbits. This was because of a predator. Okay. If anything, it could be my fault. I let this hay pile up underneath here pretty high before I muck it out and compost it down to use for the garden and such. Maybe that made it, maybe the coon was able to stand there and reach up to that to pull those through. So if that's the case, it's my fault. Definitely not the rabbits, but in any case, I've, uh, I've talked that over with my wife this morning too. And I'm gonna get this mucked out and I'm not, I guess in the future, I'm not gonna let it get that tall. Although, like I said, they've been here since last fall and that was never a problem until now. So, but uh, I'm not a Marine, but what is the saying they use? Uh, improvise, adapt, and overcome? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I love the Marines like all the armed forces. They, in the meantime, you see the cardboard. That might help some. It may or may not. Uh, what I know about coons is if they want to get somewhere, if they're given enough time, they're going to get there. So, I might just have to make it a point ever so often to come out here through the night, and, at least until they're a couple of weeks old and start to move around and jump and what have you, and could get away from a predator. Uh, might have to come out here ever so often at night and check and see that everything's all right. But, uh, <laughs> See, that's how they get their exercise. See, you see, can you see Big Red standing up there? He don't know we're watching him. You see him standing up there, he scratch it. he'll scratch that straw and he pulls it through. That's one inch by two inch openings on the top, by the way. They can pull that, they can get that straw and pull that through there. Um, but it is, a, it, it is a little bit of a job for them, but that's where, the, that's where they get the exercise out of doing it. And uh, you know, and that's good for them. But, I don't think the camera picked it up, but he was up there and he was scratching. I got him. He was scratching at the top of that. Uh, they're just silly. They're just silly. Um, 
just so you guys, just to let you guys know, I mean, we had the we had the bad experience with the raccoon and everything. All of these does now either are or soon will be, with the exception of Eve. She's got a little while to go. But all these other does are either are rebred uh, and looking towards the next litter, or they soon will be. Uh, ordinarily, we wait until the babies are three weeks old. And then we wean them, and then about a week or so later, we'll wean the babies off, and that'll give Mama two or three weeks, well, about three weeks, I guess, by herself to rest, recover, and recuperate, three R's. Wait, I guess we need to throw relaxation in there because she looks like she's relaxing. I guess if I'd leave her alone. I thought, I thought she was going to lay there and let me pet her. But anyway, uh, they just, they're just not going to be happy until I bring them some bread. But, uh, all right, guys, that's all I got to talk about. I'll probably end up cutting a bunch of this stuff out here because I, you know, I know you guys get bored just hearing me change from one subject to the other every 13 seconds and what have you. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and have a great day. God bless.